Welcome to the On My Workbench channel. In this video I will talk about how and why I built a pair of 8 foot long 605 megahertz 17 element Yagi type TV antennas with 16.64 dB of gain and why I co-phased them together. Why did I build them? My objective was to receive WTVF Channel 5 Nashville, Tennessee. I wanted an outside antenna as a backup to our direct TV satellite systems for local news during rain-induced dropouts. Years ago when I was in the satellite TV business, Weingard and Channel Master would make special TV antennas cut to any frequency that you specified. So a couple of weeks ago I called Weingard and Channel Master to see if I could buy an antenna cut for 605 megahertz. Both companies told me that they no longer make custom antennas. So I decided to build one myself. I knew it would be a bit of a challenge because WTVF's transmitting tower is 88.39 miles from our house. See the video DIY TV Antenna Part 1. Why 605 megahertz? I went with 605 megahertz because WTVF Channel 5 is currently transmitting on RF Channel 25, 539 megahertz and is scheduled to change to channel 36, 605 megahertz between now and the end of October 2019. So my thought was if I build an antenna for their new RF channel 36 and it worked while they're still on channel 25 then it should still work after they make the change to their new RF channel 36. I used an 8 foot piece of 1 inch by 1 inch aluminum angle for a drill template so I could make a second antenna identical to the first. I only had to lay out the spacing for the elements once on the template and then transfer the locations to the aluminum tubes. What I have done here is clamp the angle aluminum to the one inch by one inch angle or aluminum tubing. I clamped them together. On the angle aluminum I drilled the series of holes. All these holes correlate to the, where the elements for the Yagi go. I use the Yagi calculator to determine where the elements go and I pre-drill these holes. Now all I have to do is just take my punch, put it in that hole, and transfer that location to the square tubing. Okay, now that I've transferred the holes, I've removed the, uh, the angle template, the pattern, and I've got all the, the holes marked with the automatic punch. By the way, I get that automatic punch from Harbor Freight, only a few dollars. They're well worth it. Now I'm going to take it in, put it on the drill press, and drill these holes. I'll drill from the top, through, and down to the bottom, all the way through. Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to level the, the uh, aluminum tubing by leveling the drill table, by raising and lowering the drill table. The reason I want the tubing level is so when I drill all the way through the tubing to the other side it comes out on the exact opposite side and I don't have any skewed angle to it. I've got the table where I want it. I'll lock the table down. drilling these with an eighth inch drill bit before I drill them with a quarter inch. Okay, so I have my holes drilled. This is my reflector. That's my dipole. First director, second, third, fourth, and so on. I flip it over. I have the exact same pattern on the opposite side. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to drill holes across the top to put the anchor screws or anchor bolts in, actually rivets, I'm going to use pop rivets, to hold the uh, all the elements in place. I'm using the same technique with the automatic punch to punch the pop rivet hole in the top of the boom. Now these holes are directly over the elements. Now 
As can be seen in the photos, I use 3 quarter inch number 6 galvanized screws instead of pop rivets to hold the elements into the booms. This makes it easier if you ever have to remove an element from the boom. I did not video cutting the elements, so I'm going to use photos. To cut the elements, I made a cutting jig using a piece of 3 quarter inch tongue and groove flooring material and a 2 by 3. To cut the elements, I placed the aluminum rod in the groove on the cutting jig and used an exacto saw to cut the elements. I cut the elements 2 millimeters longer than called for in the Yagi calculator. Okay, what I'm doing here is I'm going to tune this director, this element, to the length it's supposed to be. It needs to be 243 millimeters. So what I'm going to do is slowly take a little bit off. If you're doing this, you want to cool it down because that puppy gets real hot. And then measure it. It needs to be 243 millimeters and 245 right there. I need to take it down two more millimeters. That's 244. I'll finish it up off camera. Okay, I'm just touching this, just for just cleaning it up a little bit. If you notice while I'm doing this, I'm rotating the rod. Just rotating a little bit as I'm doing it. Now the last thing that I do is I put a little bevel on it. Just a slight little bevel. Makes it go through the boom a little bit easier and cleans up the sharp edge on the end of it so you don't touch yourself. Perfect, 243 millimeters. I made a second jig using three-quarter flooring material for punching and drilling holes in the center of the elements for the hold-down screws. The dipole mounting block is made from a half-inch thick, one-inch wide, and five-inch long piece of King Starboard. See the link in the description. I used RG6 coax cable clamps to secure the dipoles to the mounting block. I drilled holes in the ends of the dipoles and through the mounting block for one and one quarter inch stainless steel Phillips head screws to connect the dipoles to the phasing harness and to the ballum using stainless steel washers and wing nuts. This is a completed 17 element Yagi sitting on the workbench. Here's a shot where I'm holding the first completed 17 element Yagi. Photos of the first 17 element version 2.0 on the 40 foot mast. This single 2.0 received everything that the two co phased 1.0s did, but WKRN Channel 2 was still pixelating and dropping out. Here's a photo of the 605 megahertz phasing harness. This phasing harness is 19.5 inches in length to the start of the stripped out wires. 19.5 inches is one full wavelength for 605 megahertz. I built, mounted, and co-phased a second version 2.0 to the first version 2.0. What a big improvement over a single 2.0. Now WKRN channel 2 has fewer pixelizations and dropouts. The two co-phased 17 element version 2.0s reduced the pixelating and dropouts on WKRN channel 2 down to a couple of hours in the middle of the day from around 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. and WKRN is not pixelating or dropping out at night. Please check back with the On My Workbench channel for part 3 of the DIY antenna project. In part 3 I will be co-phasing the two 9 element version 1.0s with the two 17 element 2.0s to try and receive additional TV stations from Chattanooga. Please subscribe, like, comment, and click the little bell. And thanks from the On My Workman's channel.